Mikia Corbett and I am an assistant professor at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health in the Department of Immunology and Infectious Diseases and I love science. I grew up in a family of seven. Hillsborough is certainly a part still of each of our lives in, in so many ways. I mean, our grandparents live there, my parents live there. Hillsborough certainly sits as a, a backdrop to the way that I think about my science. And when I was 16 years old, I did an internship at the University of North Carolina, and I just fell in love with the scientific process. I felt like I was a scientist after that summer, and I just could not stop trying to be a scientist. We were able to get a vaccine into a phase one clinical trial in 66 days because of the large amount of research that was done prior to my team even working on coronaviruses. And there's research on messenger RNA and its use to deliver therapeutic proteins that has been going on for you know upwards of, of 10 to 15 years. There were MERS and SARS, which are other coronaviruses that other viral immunologists and vaccinologists had worked on previously. And then with us, we were really interested in understanding the fundamental basic biology of surface proteins on coronaviruses. And we did that in a collaborative network of our group at the National Institutes of Health, groups even at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Ralph Barrick's group. And in that collaborative effort, we really laid a foundation for the vaccine development that um, led way into this rapid SARS-CoV-2 vaccine development. I am very heavily still involved in um, the COVID-19 vaccine response. You know, there is a vaccine, but there are continuing understanding of how the vaccine protects against variants, the question of whether to boost or not. So many fundamental viral immunology questions to assess from this vaccine response that could help us with, with future vaccine responses, whether it be for coronaviruses or, or other viruses that are similar. Also really answering some really fundamental viral immunology questions, going back to that foundational work that happened prior to the pandemic to further decipher those questions to further assess what the viral immunology across the coronavirus viral family looks like so that we can help to further vaccine development further with more novel vaccines. So mRNA is one thing, but there's so many different platforms that have the potential to revolutionize modern medicine and we're going to explore those. I've been working with young people in math and science and other disciplines a long time. And I will tell you, those who tend to be most successful tend to be very curious. They're always asking why. She had this passion for daring to know. She wanted to know, to understand different phenomena and was always working in that direction. But Dr. Corbett is a force of nature. She not only uh, gets very excited about science, but she can light up a camera or light up a room. And when you're in her presence, you can tell that there's somebody in the room who really cares and who really uh, wants to make things happen for the, for the better. For me, I think that failure in itself is actually very motivating. Um, and even though sometimes, of course, it can make you down, from an experimental standpoint, as long as you have a really strong hypothesis and as long as you know how to go about answering that type of question, then you know that eventually you will get to some answer. One thing which I still remember is, so she came to Sri Lanka for about two months. We had this long holiday. It was a religious holiday called Vesak. You know, everyone, the whole country shuts down. And she wanted to work during that time. And I, I ended up having to get special permission from the CEO of GeneTech for her to work. So she's like that. And she was so focused and intense. That's something which really sticks in my mind. Dr. Corbett never shies away from an opportunity to serve the community. She's always thinking outside the box and knows firsthand that new perspectives and doing things a little differently can open up an entire world of innovation. I like to remind people that theories change. That's why science textbooks are rewritten. 
our knowledge is consistently being built upon. And I think that's the beauty of science. It's also why I will always have a job. <laughs> well, Dr. Corbett's at the very beginning of what I'm sure will be a long and successful career, but already she's contributed to a number of different programs at our lab and during graduate school. But right now she's best known. She's become a celebrity scientist for her work on coronavirus uh, vaccine development and uh, understanding mechanisms of immunity. And so she was instrumental in the work leading up to the Moderna vaccine. The vaccine development for COVID-19, which we went through for a year and a half at the National Institutes of Health is one of the highlights of my career for sure. It, it particularly for me shifted my mindset um, in the way that I think about science, um, in the way that I think about science from a translational perspective, but also the ability to communicate science outward to the general public. It became very clear to me that that was so important. She's spoken on the Eastern Shore to people who are rural, to girls in churches, uh, at medical centers. She has been relentless. She has been determined to make that difference, not simply in creating the vaccine, but in connecting that vaccine to the public. I would say that I would like to see communication around vaccines become less polarized to the general public. We don't necessarily allow for people to see the process of science as it is real. We don't talk about the vaccines until the trials have started, but there have of course been years, sometimes even decades of work that have gone into those. We all want to witness science transforming the world, but we want to make sure that that science is good. We were really lucky and honored that Dr. Corbett agreed to serve on City of Boston's COVID-19 Advisory Board. We know that in this very, very difficult time that the city went through, equity had to be at the center of our policies and decision-making, and her contributions to that board were incredibly important and always making sure that community members had a voice and that their viewpoints were directly represented. I have to say to you that for people of color and for women, to say that we have here this first black woman to play such a major role in creating a vaccine, first in the world, gives all of us goosebumps. All you need to do is watch the faces of children and young people and young women when she is speaking. Look into the faces of those who are looking into her face. And you see the possibilities becoming reality. You see young women, little girls, feeling as she does that we can do this. We can do this. It's still very surreal to me. I still cannot believe we as a team did that. I was told that I was one of the first people to open a vial of the vaccine. At um, just 36 and, and years old, Dr. Kazmikia Corbett worked night and day with a team of scientists developing Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine in record time. Why is Dr. Corbett a game changer? Oh my gosh, she's an absolute game changer because when she was at the National Institutes of Health, she really laid down the backbone for the COVID-19 vaccine. Being honored by people like you and having people say that out loud is certainly so surreal. Do you think we're gonna get better about seeing those disparities and fixing that? I was an undergrad when the HIV pandemic was in an uproar. And one thing that I saw was that it really only mattered what neighborhood you lived in. What we have to do is continue to keep the conversation open. Definitely. Because the same types of disparities that we saw with COVID-19, we saw with HIV, we've seen with so many other diseases. Working toward equal distribution of the vaccine was just the beginning. I hope you guys are rested and peaceful and healthy and vaccinated. Corbett has spent the last two years encouraging anyone and everyone to get the shot. You said something, you said vaccine hesitancy, and I know you don't like using that term. I don't. You like vaccine inquisitiveness. Mm -hmm. Why? By calling them vaccine inquisitive, you give them the liberty to be the scientist, actually. Ask the question. Ask the question. And if I can, I will answer it for you. 
a lot of these people have just never had their opinions heard before. You know what I also heard in that though, is that as a woman, young woman, you are allowed to have a voice. That is one of my daily affirmations. Mm. Is it? Yes. I am strong, I am beautiful, I have a voice. Say it out loud every single day, you'll start to believe it, and then when someone doesn't believe it, you won't care. Mm. I remember talking to my dad and he said, just go where you're gonna be loved. Mm. And it, it was almost immediate that I knew where I needed to be in the next step. You just don't see as many girls in technology and in science, and certainly you don't see as many people of color. And I really feel like it's hard to be what you can't see. And so I think you're a huge role model. I don't think, I know you're a huge role model to so many young girls. Yeah. You know, it, it is an honor to be inspirational, mm. for sure.